What is up, good people? Hope you're doing well. This is Brian Nam. You should hop on over to our Patreon and become a diver to receive exclusive benefits like early and ad-free access to audio episodes, monthly live streams with the founders of Dive Studios, including myself, and so much more. These episodes are made possible only by you, our divers. So thank you for keeping us going. We really appreciate it. It really does make a difference. You can join us at patreon.com backslash dive studios. Thanks. Welcome to the beauty bar where we tend to beautiful people just like you. We're your hosts, Joan and Stephanie. And we want to make sure you're treating not just your face, but more importantly, yourself right. Today, we'll be joined by a very special guest, the absolutely lovely Connor Franta. Yes, so excited. Are you so excited? I really am. <laughs> I'm fangirling right now, actually. I just can't wait to get on call with him and just meet him. And find yes. out some good things about his skincare routine, his life, what he's up his to. projects, yeah. Make sure to follow and review the podcast on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. And if you hate ads, consider becoming a member of Dive Studios Patreon, where you can access ad-free episodes. Yes. Let's, Let's get go. started. <laughs> All right, so before we get on call with Connor, do you have any YouTubers that you grew up watching? Oh, I definitely used to watch Tyler Oakley. Oh, yes. I definitely watch Tyler Oakley a lot too. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. It feels like when you see them back mm-hmm. then, those videos, it was like such a time right. in your life, like mm-hmm. 10 years ago, yeah. when it just started being like a thing mm-hmm. of being a YouTuber. Right. And- Who did you watch? Who inspired you to become a YouTuber? Oh my gosh. So I really liked watching Zoella. And then Zoella introduced me to like Troy Sivan. And then Troy Sivan, Tyler Oakley, the like Connor Franta, O2L. Like they all kind of like… I just knew all of them. So this is so exciting for me because I, I, I don't know. I think in college when I was learning about what YouTube actually was, I did a lot of research research by watching a lot of YouTube. Mm-hmm. And they're definitely pioneers on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. They are like the OGs. Mm-hmm. What made me want to start YouTube? I think just watching a lot of YouTube videos. I was friends with Jen Im. I am friends with Jen Im. So seeing her make videos oh, yeah. made me think like, oh, like that's a very cool, cool thing you're doing there. I didn't think I would ever become a YouTuber. I moved to Korea to work radio. And then I started YouTube and then that's how I started. Oh. But these people definitely taught me how to talk in front of a camera audience. If that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. you're just talking in front of a camera super confidently. <laughs> to so, the camera. Yeah. But you have to make it very natural. Right. That's definitely tricky. Yeah. So mm. I… Do applaud them for paving the way for the job that I have now. Like the job we have now, right? And so I'm really excited about this because… Yeah. Like Tyler Oakley, (laughs) Connor Franta was definitely one of the first that I subscribed to. Yeah. Let's welcome a new beautiful face to the show. Author, designer, creator, Connor Franta. Oh my god. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. (laughs) I am so excited right now because I've been watching your YouTube channels for years. Isn't it crazy how quickly you could have just said, I've been watching you for years and that'd be so freaky. (laughs) Yes. I've been watching you for years. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. I'm glad you don't think it's creepy because you know what it's like because you've been on the internet for since you were a teenager. I know. 11 years. Isn't that wild? 11 wow, years. Wow. It's been a long time. I know. I know. You yeah, look the, the, the foot- same. You have perfect skin. Like, Keep going. <laughs> Keep I'll going. stop. is great at complimenting. <laughs> mm-hmm. She gives the best compliments. I'm just excited because I'm fangirling. <laughs> right? I, I've been watching your YouTube videos too. And I definitely share your love for plants. And it makes me so happy Seeing all your plants and all your videos. I, and your house is so, has yeah. such beautiful natural light. Lighting. I'm like… <gasps> Thank you. It's my… I, I used to live in an apartment that had 
no natural lighting. And Mm. once I left there, I went for the place that had the most natural lighting. There was a window on every wall. There was a skylight in every room. Uh-huh. I'm like I, it just brings me so much joy. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so weird because I feel like I'm watching a YouTube video just <laughs> unedited, and I feel so honored to be here in your presence. Because I actually saw like some of your books here in the Korean bookstores too. Um, Note to self: the really aesthetically pleasing one. I love it. Thank you. I know, isn't that? Yeah, I. I still get tagged in um, specifically like photos from Asia of my book finally mm-hmm. making it there. Like it took right. a few years, but it's finally there. And it's super, yeah. yeah, it's super exciting that it's gone beyond just, I guess, America. Across borders. Across yeah, borders. that's very she- exciting. But also 2015, you released your first book memoir, A Work in Progress. And then 2017, Note to Self that Joan just yeah. mentioned. And now you're actually coming out with another book this year. Yeah, I've been busy. Three books. Um, would have never thought I would have written one, but here I am writing three. Yeah, I, I work, I've been working on this one for the past two to three years, and it comes out October 19th. It's a collection of poetry, short stories, and photography over the past uh, three years of my life, and I'm really, really excited about it. Oh, that's amazing. How has the process been for you now that this is your third book compared to when you released your first book? Where were you in your life, like, is it different now? You're writing. How is that for you? You'd think it'd get easier. Like, you would think that, you know, the more you practice at something, the more you flex a muscle, the more that you (laughs) would. But no, it's still a book. It still was so difficult to write. But it was really, it's, I always find writing therapeutic because it allows me time to reflect on things that I normally would just allow to pass over. So I really kind of get a greater understanding of myself or my triumphs or my traumas through mm-hmm. this these moments of self-reflection, which usually yeah. I do um, very much in like a traditional writer way where I'm like letting myself go into the woods alone and just sit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Quiet. Can you share some tips on how you manage writing a book, running a YouTube channel, having an aesthetically pleasing Instagram feed? How do you do that? Like, is there a tip that you want to just share to the world? Because I think it's pretty amazing how you're able to juggle all those different projects and still look, you know, effortless calm. and calm. Yeah. yeah. Like, how, please share. I think Beauty Bar listeners would love that. Get a good therapist. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah? (laughs) Just just one thing? Just one thing. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, no, Mm. it's it's, um, it's a lot to juggle. I find that uh, there's so much going on in the world uh, at any given point that it's hard for me to be focused on one lane at one time. So I kind of Mm -hmm. need all of those things to like divert my attention when something isn't working or something isn't uh as enjoyable it's like i just go to the next one kind of like a dog i'm like a dog with like three owners and three balls i'm just like looking at all of them at the same time uh but no yeah i think it's about uh i think it's just about following your passions and and having fun with it i know that's so cliched Mm. but you know there's no time like the present and if, if you really like something if you like plants if you like if you like beauty it's like i don't know just figure like just pursue it 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 at the very least, it'll be a fun hobby. It'll be a fun time. So that's just kind of how I go about life and go about YouTube and the internet is if I enjoy mm-hmm. it, let's make something. Yeah. That's some very good advice, especially, oh, I watched this one video and it's just says, just do. <laughs> well, just do. Because I think that's the the first step is to actually just do it started. yeah because I do that often too mm-hmm. where I just overthink it and I'm such a perfectionist and yeah. just have these like how oh, I'm gonna do it and then I never started but just getting started like you said it's just the first step and then you can do so many things you just have to start somewhere I know mm-hmm. it's so like when I look back on th- some of the first videos I uploaded to YouTube I'm like how did I to your quote just do like how did I do that <laughs> I I look back thinking no one was motivating me I like no one was doing it. It was kind of a weird mm. thing to do at the time. Yeah. So I have no idea where that inspiration and motivation and confidence came from to put yourself right. on the internet for strangers to judge you at a time where I was in high school. So naturally I was so <laughs> the antithesis <laughs> of that. Right. So Cause insecure. we're all still trying to figure ourselves out. Right. And you basically grew up on the internet and 
I think that is… Yeah, you're right. You are definitely one of the first people in the world to ever get started on what it… What a content creator is. Because you're really spreading yourself out. Oh, sorry it's about just that. the Hannah Wing Montana Town. song playing in the background. It's a party. You know, it's a party. Like, <laughs> let's play some Hannah Montana. Yeah. Uh, and now bring um, in our special guest, Miley Cyrus. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's awesome because you are definitely one of the first like content creators I did subscribe to. And yeah. One of the millions. Paved the way. <laughs> yeah, you really did. I know. <laughs> and I mean, it's, it just goes… It's like to our earlier point that I didn't know that at the time. I had no idea what I was doing or I had no intention yeah. of being that. I just mm-hmm. I just enjoyed watching YouTube videos and thought, I don't know. I have like… I have a webcam. I have mm-hmm. a cheap editing software that I don't know how to use. But there are tutorials yeah. online. So I guess just like, why not? What's going to be the worst thing that happens? I'm not mm-hmm. good yeah. at it. I don't know. Like, we're not good and at definitely thing- back then. Yeah, there wasn't even like a standard yet because it didn't even exist. Right. Really, I know. I tell people this uh, all the time that it's such a weird thing to think about. Where making a making a piece of content, there was nothing like it. So if I made a video of just like ten foods to eat because you're hungry, no mm-hmm. one had made a video like that. Like there yeah. were no videos with that title. That would be the <laughs> first one, and it's almost uh-huh. impossible to fathom now. But it was such a, it, I don't know, it was a really interesting space to, to be a pioneer in, I guess. Yeah. Do you ever look back at your, your videos? Because I actually yesterday went and looked at your oldest videos and kind of your journey. And it's just even watching some videos through the years, how much you've grown up essentially. Mm-hmm. Like Joan said, on the internet. Do you ever go back and watch one of your first videos and be like, man, who was I even then? I did it. Um, I actually did that for a YouTube video recently, and it was kind of it was one of the first times that I really uh, that I, I I guess I watched it in full. I feel like sometimes mm. I'll catch glimpses of myself from the past, and yeah, it's it's strange. It's almost like I don't even recognize that person, especially because I truly do feel like a completely different person. Because prior mm. prior to you know uh, being online, it was like I lived in Minnesota. I live in Los Angeles now. I was in the closet. I'm out and gay now. Mm-hmm. I like wasn't confident. I feel pretty confident now. It just feels so night and day that watching that person, it's like I'm disassociated from myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, so weird. Right? I do it to a cringe so hard sometimes. I look at my old photos and I'm like, oh my goodness. I yeah. Know. Like oh. judging our like makeup choices back then, oh, know. you know? I know the yeah. fashion trends. Yeah, the the polos, the gel in the hair. I was from the yeah. Midwest too, so no one had fas- a fashion sense. <laughs> so whatever fashion sense everyone else had, we had less of it. <laughs> <laughs> but LA is totally different, right? Mm. Yeah, I suppose. People think they have a fashion sense here, but I think people… <laughs> <laughs> they do. I, yeah, I think people um, in New York or people actually, honestly, I love um, Korean fashion. Uh, mm. So I think people think they have a fashion sense in LA, but they really don't. Yeah. And here, even you can't go. That's something I learned in America. It's totally acceptable to go in your sweatpants to the supermarket. Yeah. But here, everybody's so dressed up. I mean, I yeah. still do that, though. <laughs> I do You're too. Like, I still wear sweatpants. Not I mean, on my own you know, it's podcast. crazy. Because when I was living in America, I refused to wear sweatpants out. So as an American, I was like, oh, I'm not wearing sweatpants out. But in Korea, I started to not care. And I think it's age too. Because I'm 30 now. And so just, you know. Yeah. Oh, Don't care anymore. Yeah. But it's similar in Germany that it's not very acceptable to wear sweatpants out. Right. And one time I went to the bakery Uh to get breakfast and I wore my Hello Kitty sweatpants. (laughs) And I grew up in a very small town. Yeah. And someone who saw me called my mom and was like, is Stephanie okay? (laughs) Is she she okay? She wore sweatpants to the bakery. Mm. And… Yeah. You're okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm comfortable. <laughs> yeah. That, that, oh my God, the gossip. No, in Minnesota, yes. where, where I grew up, people wore… That was like a fashion. People would wear sweatpants with Uggs. Do you know oh. what, Like Uggs, sweatpants, yes. and like… Yes. And like that was 
that was not on that was not them being like i'm wearing relaxed clothing that was yeah. their clothing <laughs> yeah i remember in high school we wore like these denim skirts with ugg boots but it's california we don't need <laughs> to wear ugg boots but we did that was a trend at one point and yeah i cringe when i look at that because it just does not look well together and back then we folded the uggs so the you know the fur pops out a little yep, bit yep. so it just looks what are you doing? Are you confused? Like, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, so there were definitely those moments. <laughs> yeah, at least in Minnesota, I guess the Uggs were necessary because it gets so cold. But, yeah. But you know what I wasn't? Can- the bedazzled jeans, the, the boot cut <laughs> jeans, those were not necessary. Oh my goodness. And I had too many of them. <laughs> That's, I think, a global phenomenon. They were yeah. everywhere. I mean, lot. hey, trends do come, come, come around though. And I feel like right now, everybody is just wearing sweatpants everywhere yeah and so you know back then what you thought would be an embarrassment to walk out in it's now a trend well i can't wait to look back in like 10 years to now be like what were we thinking yeah like what was i wearing (laughs) exactly i think we're in a good period now i feel like like three four years ago when there was a lot of like leopard print i feel like guys went through a phase where everyone was wearing crazy prints like, yeah, like a lot of print, not like a, uh-huh. not like a, an interesting one. And but I feel like now everyone's kind of gone into this minimalist aesthetic. But um, yeah, a lot of like drapey fabrics, which I'm really, <laughs> I really like. It's a little bit more androgynous. Uh, uh, uh. Is that something you learned after moving to LA? Like all of a sudden, like wow, or something you were forced to care about, or was it something you naturally had an interest in mm. after coming to LA? I think I naturally had an interest in it since being, um, since growing up. I always was really, thi- I, like, not that I had a good fashion sense, but I always mm. did care what I yeah. wore. Like, I remember the first time I, like, even just was became aware of brands. Like, I remember thinking, oh, I really want a North Face jacket. Like, it has mm. to be a North Face jacket. There was yeah. something about it that was like, I specifically need the North Face jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There was a moment with those. Oh yeah, I mean, there's kind of still this whole like, this mm-hmm, whole like yeah. workman um, oh, wear yeah. is like very in right now. Mm-hmm. So people love a, a North Face, a Carhartt, um, mm-hmm. anything in that realm. But yeah, I remember like really caring, even though it wasn't that I necessarily had any sort of interesting takes. I did very much care what I looked like. <laughs> we all do. Yeah. Yeah. Th- does this also apply to skincare? What was your knowledge before and after coming to LA? Does that apply the same? I'm so ashamed to say that I don't think I had a skincare routine or regimen uh-huh. until like maybe like three, four years ago. And I'm I'm okay. turning 29 this weekend. So I like <gasps> did not. Oh my gosh. I know. I did not. I did not care. <laughs> <laughs> like I, yeah, I was very much one of those, those men. Um, oh God, those men, uh, those men who who didn't know what type of lo- didn't know there were different types of lotion. Like growing mm. up, it was just like mm, it's just lotion. Yeah, it, it's good for all skin, right? <laughs> The all-in-one oh, yeah. shampoo, body wash, conditioner. <laughs> it can't be all-in-one. It's not possible. It doesn't work that way. I mean, there are a lot of all-in-one products out here in the Korean market. Um, no judgment. What worked for you, you know your skin best, right? Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, it's not like I had… I really didn't have bad skin growing up. So mm-hmm. it clearly either it's genetics, which it definitely could be, um, yeah. or it just worked for me. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Actually, it's good that you got started on it around the age twenty five or four. Then, right? Yeah, I mean, that's fine. You're 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 good. That's good. It's before the wrinkles. Set yeah, in. before. Yeah, these days, thirties. <laughs> it, it comes like this. Just warning you now. I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> I've had some ache, achy joints recently, and I'm like, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It? I'm deteriorating. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> no. Just downhill from thirty. No. No. But, no, 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 it's not, it's, it's not like that, age I just is just turned, a number. Yes, it I is. just turned 30 this year and it's been better than before. Yeah. yeah so I've been truly enjoying being 30. <laughs> yeah, I totally, I, yeah, I agree with that. I think that it, it's, it is what you make it to be. And every, mm. everything is a construct. Every, like what's supposed to happen in your 20s versus your 30s is a complete, we're just replicating what other people have done. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm listening to an audio book from something you would write. <laughs> mm, I may yeah, have written about right? this. It's yeah. like I'm regurgitating it. <laughs> Do you have any inner beauty tips for our listeners? I definitely yeah. focus more on inner beauty nowadays. Mm. I feel like mm. as I've gotten older, as much as you know, I do have a skincare routine, I do care about what I, I look like. It's not mm. that it consumes my every thought anymore. I feel like there's that period when you're um, kind of gaining your confidence and your sense of identity where you are focused so hard on just trying to be in whoever it is that you are. Like you're really mm -hmm. trying to find that person. So now right. that I feel like I've kind of found it, it's like I just want to be more of like a complex person so I'm, I'm more focused on i guess how i treat others uh different qualities that i have as a person you know things like that internal internal mm -hmm. related qualities so do i have any tips no not really to be honest <laughs> just, i guess it just takes if you want if this takes effort i guess <laughs> yeah I advise mean, so me <laughs> inspired by how you even wake up early in the morning I think that oh, yeah. is a, something. How long did that take for you? I think it's been built into me because I used to do athletics and I would have to swim um, before school mm -hmm. in high school. So I just, I guess I have an appreciation for getting something done early in a way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I would much rather, I don't know about you and uh, maybe you're this way too, but like, I like to get up and know that I don't have to immediately do something. So I like to like, I would rather get up at 4 a.m. just if mm -hmm. I need that hour to get ready to get up. Yes. It's the best. Uh -huh. It's my favorite yeah. time. I need my coffee. Yes. <laughs> and like, mm -hmm. I need to do my skincare routine. Uh, yes. I, I, I wish I was more like that. And every morning I'm like, I'm gonna wake up early <laughs> and do some stretching and make breakfast before yeah. Korean class. And then I'm, I wake up five minutes before class and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my so God. it's been, it takes I've time. been trying, which is very strange because when I used to live in LA, I was a super morning person. Mm. I would go to bed at 11 every night. And then the morning, well, my roommates would literally play guitar and sing Jolene in the morning <laughs> and wake me up. And I'm like, lovely. And yeah. they're not very gifted singers, oh. just to say that. Yeah. And also not very gifted guitar players. <laughs> But after coming here, I totally became a night owl. Mm. Yeah, I kind of… I think Seoul does that to you. Right? Because whenever I'm traveling and in LA or like a sunnier city, I wake up super early. I'm ready to walk. I'm ready to walk 25,000 steps for the day. And here, I'm always at home or waking up a little bit later than usual. And so I'm actually working on trying to… Do those morning runs, kind of like how you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, but not as early as you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, no, thank you. <laughs> when do restaurants and bars and businesses typically close there? Like, what? Is well, there, is it's it much different later? for everything. It yeah. is. Oh. I mean, right now because of COVID right. restrictions, but before most things open twenty four hours, many uh, places, yeah, many places like yeah. bars. I mean, yeah, Korea is very different depending on what business it is. Gotcha. I think cafes also are open till late. Yeah. But right now with the social distancing rules, everything closes at 10. Okay. Mm, yeah. Versus so, like a lot of places in America, that's the standard is places close at 10. Right. There's not a lot of cities um, that don't sleep here. Um, mm -hmm. Like I think New York tends to have later hours, but a lot of cities right. in America, it's like, you can barely be a night owl if you want to, unless you want to go to like a rager or a club mm. or something. <laughs> but that also ends at two. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah I know. Mm -hmm. And like that's when the party starts in Seoul, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, that's. Wait, you have to visit. You I have want to visit to Seoul. So you really do. I want to so yes. desperately. We won't let you sleep. We're like, let's yeah. go out. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> no. If I go, no. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I I want to yes. so badly. There's like mm. the food, the fashion, everything. I want to see so badly. Yeah, you'll love it. Mm. Aww. The countryside. Oh. Why does COVID have to ruin everything? I would go now. <laughs> yeah, I know, but. I feel like it's going to get better soon, hopefully. <laughs> yes. yes. We can help. Yeah. 
You know, I would love to be there though. So we must ask you. <laughs> yes. yes. What makes you feel beautiful? What makes me feel beautiful? Um, I feel like I feel my most beautiful when, uh, I guess usually when I just, like when everything really falls into place, like when I'm wearing something that I know fits me just right. Uh, mm -hmm. When my, the rare day where my hair like lays exactly how I want it to. Like in terms of physical beauty, that's usually when it happens. Um, and when I feel like, I guess most like effervescent or most bright is usually after I have accomplished something. Like I, I genuinely, I probably should feel the ugliest I ever feel, but like after a really long run where I'm not mm -hmm. tired, I'm like, I just feel accomplished. Usually like yeah. a run by the beach here. I feel mm -hmm. on top of the world. And I guess wow. if that's beautiful, then that mm -hmm. is definitely what I feel. Aww. <laughs> I love that. Do you have some skincare? Well, actually, can you share your skincare routine with us? Yeah, like, I, what does it look like? Do you have a 10-step? Are you an all-in-one type of guy? Like, what, what is it? I kind of go with the flow. I definitely have… There's like… There is a flow to it. Can I tell you exact… It's not like a… I do this on day one. And on day two, mm. I do this. It's more of… I always wash my face when I get up in the morning. I always wash my face before I go to bed. Mm. Um, I use uh, a lot of, not a lot, but like a few times a week, maybe three times a week, I'll use like a, a retinol um, mm -hmm. youth serum, I think it's called technically. And it wow. honestly does wonders to my face. I feel like it erases lines. Mm. Uh, Wait, what product? <laughs> Wait. Uh, honestly, it's-, it's <laughs> What product? I'll plug it because I love them so much. It's Dr. Oh, yeah. Dr. Murad. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The youth, Let's take youth, notes. It youth is serum. Okay. Next level. Their youth okay. serums are so great. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do some serums that I honestly couldn't tell you really what's in from Dr. Merritt a lot too, but a lot of it's like mm. a brightening serum. Uh, oh. And then in terms of everything else, again, it's just like constantly being moisturized. I feel like yes. I didn't focus on moisture uh, when I was younger. So now I'm mm -hmm. like constantly focusing on using mm. really good quality lotion. And then obviously sunscreen. Yes. Oh, yes. A plus. So Good job, Kana. Connor has the test. Sunscreen before the run. It's sunscreen so after the run. After. Oh, sunscreen. Yeah. Mm. Sunscreen is actually something I learned about when I moved to Korea. So you are on top of it. And mm -hmm. I'm from LA, and I didn't even wear sunscreen unless I went to the beach. So the fact that you use SPF before and after your runs, we're so proud. Very proud. Very proud. Again, only <laughs> she loves SPF. Only, re only recently in the last couple of years have I been like every it's okay. day, every <laughs> day. <laughs> wow, wow! Thank you so much for sharing that. I want to know what's the best. Like, if you like now or or later, I want to know the best SPFs um, that you oh. guys like. Have any that you recommend? Please send yes. me a list. Please. Okay, I I, I will, I will. <laughs> Thank you. I stole Jones and it's great. It's good, right? Yeah. Oh my, I it's Botox hers. in a bottle. Like I'm not even kidding. It's so great. It's formulated with hella peptides. So it's supposed to help with the anti-aging. And so it's the sunscreen I live by. It's great. I'm glad you like it. I do. I use it every day. Oh my God, please link me to this. I need this. I, I will link you. I will, Connor. Thank you. Thank you. So do you have any other projects you're doing right now or anything you have coming up? Mainly just the book. I mean, the book comes out now in uh, about six weeks, October 19th. So right now I'm just pushing pre-orders a lot. Hopefully we're going to have a book tour. Um, mm. And yeah, you can you can pre-order it anywhere in the world right now. And uh, other than that, working on you know weekly YouTube videos. I have a new podcast I started called Everything Else, where instead of making YouTube videos and content about me, I focus on yeah. everything else. Um, so mm. anything that's like politics, pop culture, mm. Uh, advice seg segments, anything that kind of is going on beyond me. <laughs> so that's been really, that's been really enjoyable. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please share your channel, your Instagram handles for our listeners. Yeah, you can follow me on uh, YouTube.com/slash Connor Franta, Instagram.com/slash Connor Franta, Twitter.com/slash Connor Franta. It's like I, I have them all. I've, I've got them all. There is no other Connor Franta. <laughs> no, I've, I've been really blessed, and I have taken all of them. <laughs> yes, that's great. Yeah, yeah. No, that feels so good though. Like when you're making an email address or 
any ID, when your name is there, you're like, I'm, I am special. <laughs> I'm the only one. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the elite. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining and uh, sharing everything about your projects and your skincare. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it's very lovely having you on our show. Thank you for having me. It was so lovely um, meeting <laughs> you guys and chatting. And hopefully one day we'll be partying in the streets. Yes. South in person. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you so much and have a great night. Yeah. Sleep well. Thanks. And happy early birthday. Yes. Oh, happy I... early birthday. It's the same as my fiance, September 12th. I saw. Oh, really? No way. All these Virgos. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. So many Virgos. That's the second. That I was on a call with someone earlier today and they were also a September 12th birthday. So that's oh, weird. Wow. It's like September. It's everybody's birthday. All my friends are in September. Mm -hmm. All these Virgos. And it's such an expensive month. It is. <laughs> it's definitely one of the expensive months. <laughs> Wasn't it so exciting? Yeah, so <laughs> lovely. He's so… He just makes my heart like… <laughs> I don't know what the word is. He's just so sweet and good good energy. Very good energy. Right. Very I, easy to talk to. Right. And I feel like I need to go out for a run because looking <laughs> at his skin, I'm like, okay, something you're doing with your life, it just shows. He's so bright. Like, just… Anyway. Fangirling's done. Thank you so much for listening to our show, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, if you wish to stay updated on the show, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Dive Studios. Full episodes on youtube.com slash divepods. Also, please join us on Patreon at patreon.com dash The Dive Studios for exclusive content and ad-free listening from The Dive Studios Network. Once again, subscribe to and review this podcast. Make sure to check out the next episodes as well. And we'll see you there. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. You like that? You like that? You want some of that? You want some of that? <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. And please turn on the notification bell and you'll never miss an episode. Nope. <laughs>